And does anybody have my new? It's Richard Mady was here, and I did not um, put him on the list. So okay. We did to add him to the list. Any other changes? Um, I had a very minor one. I think on page two, the third paragraph down where it starts with John suggested. Vicky suggested the plan and zoning minister to write the first draft as they will be the one who, uh, maybe, should we change it to he? Nope, they. Okay, you or they? We use a they. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, David, were, you weren't here last time, were you? No. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's us four. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt the minutes as amended by Tim. Well, I didn't, and, I didn't amend it. Oh, you didn't amend. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I, I, I would like to, uh, but uh, as a, as amended by David, because you added uh, 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 Maggie. Um, yes. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, we don't have to do the roll call. All those in favor? Yes. Okay. All those opposed. Okay. Unanimously passed. Um, Ray, welcome to this is your life. <laughs> um, Thank you. you. Are, you, you can stay there if you like, or however you, you whatever you prefer, but uh, would you like to say anything, or shall we go based on, you know, whatever you like? Well, I think... Oh, uh, hold on. Wait a second. I just have to um, disclose, I work really closely with Jim, and um, Jim Kennedy, who is Ray's consultant, right. and um, he's not my boss. My boss is my, is not a volunteer, so I do work very closely with, with Jim and consider him also a personal friend, but I don't feel at all like he's going to get away with anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that, <laughs> and, um, and also, you know, this is kind of my neighborhood, so Karen is a close neighbor and, you know, but I don't have any familial fiduciary or anything like that, you know, like yeah. And, and Lori lives in my neighborhood, but uh, okay. that's okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say. And that do you know Ray? I do know Ray. <laughs> I know my, my, Ray. My mother is living in Lebanon, so is no longer um, probably okay. interested in living here. And it's a good thing because she'd be living with me all this time. So um, <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> it's maybe good that. <laughs> okay. Well, so, thank you for that yeah. uh, disclosure. Yeah. Um, does anybody have a have an issue with Vicky? Sorry. Okay, then uh, Ray, it's it's your floor if you'd like it. Well, thank you, John. Um, nice to see you all. It, it Actually, if I could get Ray to come up to the table just because of the microphone, sure. so that we can hear sure. that anyone yeah. who's online or um, listening on the phone can hear. Uh, people out yes. there, huh? There are at least uh, two other people out there right now. You demand. Hello out there. Um, well, let's see. This probably feels as strange for you as it does for me. It's uh, wonderful to be back in this building and to feel that life is potentially uh, returning to normal. Um, I don't have much to say beyond what is already in the narrative. I think you know this project. You know this property uh, quite well. And uh, I think um, I was headed back here to uh, get approval to rebuild the two units which I tore down due to code problems, building code problems, uh, when conveniently the town enacted the senior housing uh, district. And that created an opportunity for me to do additional development to the south of the property um, as you see on the plan. This was envisioned in the, in the early site plans that Jim prepared. Uh, I think we indicated potential proposed development or some such. Uh, but we didn't know that the senior housing district would in fact be enacted, but it has been. And uh, so uh, we decided to pursue what might be uh, let's call it appropriate development in that area as well. And Jim has come up with a plan um, that you see before you. I think it 
uh, we there's a lot of infrastructure involved in this project. Um, there are two septic systems. Um, there's a lot of parking, which is required. Um, there are handicapped ramps. There are uh, the, the septic systems. The um, garage parking is also sort of a necessary feature. So all of that puts a, a heavy hand, a big footprint on the uh, on the parcel that we have. Um, it's a three-acre parcel, which is large, I think, for the common. But a lot of that is also sort of over over the edge uh, and down into the wetland to the south towards Big Rock. So I think what Jim has come up with is <clears throat> a way to have the infrastructure that's required for these units um, and uh, to have minimal action. being recorded. Thank you. <laughs> um, and to have minimal impact uh, on uh, the land itself. Hey, Aaron. Um, Hello. Oh. If you want to snug in over here, you can do that. Uh -huh. um, 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 back. Oh, he doesn't want to be here. All right, all right. I'll sit in here. I just want to be able to see it. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And, and, I mean, we're wearing masks, huh? I guess that means everybody's vaccinated. Um, yeah. Yes. Are we, are we allowed to ask that or not? Sure, you can ask. I don't think people well, people are not required to tell you the truth, but um, you can ask. There. Sorry, I'm late. Okay. You know. Yeah. I know how it goes. Traffic. Traffic. <laughs> um, let's see. So Jim has tried to come up with a plan which <laughs> minimizes the impact of infrastructure, which is a requirement of any development. Um, we were pleased to uh, get the support of the Conservation Commission. Um, frankly, the, the, the major portion of this plateau, if you will, um, south of the common, has very, very good soil but nonetheless, there is a pocket of wetland on it. And uh, so when you do the wetland setbacks from that, it does restrict uh, what's available for development under, under existing <coughs> ordinances. Um, but the Conservation Commission determined that in fact, a lot of the landscape had been pretty majorly impacted by previous farming efforts in the town. Uh, and that's, you know, 200 plus years of, of, uh, of farming. Um, so, but the Conservation Commission did uh, give us their blessing, and so we moved on uh, to the ZBA. We've been before the ZBA uh, the first go around, and they. Uh, you know, I think they struggled a little bit with some of the incursions into the wetland, uh, but ultimately they uh, they gave it the nod as well. Which brings us back to the planning board. Um, I think you know that the the original this is not the original plan that I had, which was five units, four in the main house and one in the barn. Uh, but again, I had to tear down. Uh, the back two units and rebuild. So I'm here, uh, let's see, uh, sheepishly perhaps, but uh, with, with no, mm, let's see, certainty of you granting approval to rebuild in that location. Uh, but I think, uh, I suspect that that's probably an easy one for you to grant approval for uh, as the original approval was for five units and this one is sort of out of uh, except for just a, a nip of the corner out of the wetland um, 
setback district. So the other two units, I think I rely, um, you know, to a large degree on the latitude that the planning board has to grant discretion for uh, uh, appropriate development for senior housing. Um, there are some here and perhaps some listening who would question defining this as appropriate development for senior housing. Um, I leave that to the board's discretion. I'm, I'm sort of on my own mission here to try to uh, create some senior housing. Whether we create, in the end, uh, three, four, five, six, or seven senior housing units, I think um, I'll be happy with any of those outcomes. But I think there are people in town who want and need senior housing. I uh, spent some time before the meeting digging into the census information, and uh, you probably all know this being on the planning board, but the census seems to feel that we have plus or minus 450 seniors in town. That's the, defined as 65 and over, and that's just slightly over 25% of our population. So if those people live in one house or two houses, let's assume they're a couple and they're living together as seniors in a house here in Lyme. So there are potentially 225 or more of those houses out there. Some of those seniors will die. Some of those seniors will move to Kendall. Some of them can afford to go wherever they want. Um, but a lot of them, I think, want to stay right here in line, love the community, and would like to be nearby. Um, so uh, I've heard it said that not all of Lyme's senior housing development needs to happen on one property. But if we're doing seven now, and there are potential for over 200 individuals out there who, excuse me, households that might want to downsize and still stay in line, it's going to be a long, long time before you're accommodating the demand. And that demand, I would add, um, I haven't seen yet in my own um, marketing. My marketing is very limited, as you know, mostly to uh, people who've heard about it. But um, there are people out there, and some from Lyme and some from away, uh, who are interested in what I'm doing. So, you know, I, I do think there will be a market for these, uh, but it isn't as of this moment. That's that's not a uh, a guarantee. So, you know, I, I guess I'm really uh, at this point ready to answer your questions. Um, I think I've got, I didn't go to the trouble of designing buildings on the assumption that I would get approval. That seemed like a poor use of resources. But I do have some sketches, things we've been working on, and also some photographs. Uh, to show show you. So um, that said, I'm ready to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Ray. Uh, with the board's pleasure, would, would you like to ask questions um, or um, go to the... Uh, we should probably go to the completeness, you know, run the, through that. Run through the checklist. Yeah, and get it at least so we're still okay. going. Um, I think we could probably talk all night, so I yeah. get that done. Sure, okay. I think that's a good idea. That good, okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I didn't get to read the governor's emergency announcement, but I get to do this. Okay. <laughs> Names and addresses of each of butter, legal, uh, et cetera. Yep. And, um, Okay. Um, names and business addresses of every engineer, et cetera. Yes. Um, variants from the ZBA. Yes. Yeah. Uh, special ex 
exception, not applicable. Mm -hmm. um, and subdivision approval, not applicable. All right, uh, fire department review. Um, so, cre creating condominiums is actually a subdivision. So, what we should be doing, I think, is, is reviewing this as a subdivision because it is a subdivision of property. And I don't think we're going to be um, giving taking action tonight because I would really like to do a site visit and see this back area. Yeah. But I think that it needs to be renoticed as a subdivision because subdivision includes continent condominium development. So um, well, let's get okay. uh, some feedback from David on that because. Is this, well, and, and maybe you can answer that question right. I mean, this could be just considered, um, I mean, you say you're planning on it being condominiums, but it could also. You could rent it and it could be multi Well, I mean, that's what I, the point I'm making is at this point, that seems putting the cart before the horse because you're doing this under the senior housing article. So why would you need to, to do a, condominium subdivision at this point. Well, it's an interesting distinction, and it, it didn't come up at the original approval, even though I remember you, Vicki, requesting a copy of the bylaws for the condo association after it was created. Uh, so I don't know which comes first. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I can do the subdivision until I have created the houses and know the actual footprint, so I'm not prepared at this point. And I, I'm thinking that, that we, you know, it's possible for us to consider this application and if it's approved, uh, or if we give it approval then to put conditions that if it's a condominium, you will come back for the condominium. Well, he's going to have to. You would have to yeah. create the condominium subdivision without planning board approval. Right. So. Well, he can't sell things without subdivision approval is right. what, what it comes down to. Right. So, so. And, yeah. so anyway, um, if that's how you want to do it, I mean, I understand this is not a survey and that to file condo docs, you're going to need to have a uh, surveyor, license surveyor with stamp plan that you refer to to show exactly whose property is what. So, um, but I just don't want that to get lost. Well, that's a good so. point. So. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, and and actually, uh, when you, with the variance from the ZBA, did they put any conditions? Make any conditions, or it was just a clear? Uh, just a clear. Okay. Um, okay. Fire department review. I did ask you, and I've not heard back from Mike Mundy on that. So uh, Mike Mundy did review the plans. He. I'm not sure that I, did I share that with you? Uh, you said you gave, gave me some feedback, but I, again, I need an official letter from yes. Mike. Um, and I had requested that he get that to you, but uh, I guess I'm gonna have to say, uh, he has, he would like to see the road actually widen, I think, by two feet. Uh, he wanted 14 feet of width there. Jim, did I share that with you? Yep. Okay, so uh, he okay, also, uh, Want me to read it? That might be good. Yeah, he was also <coughs> concerned about ambulance turnaround. And, so, so Jim, you, you have the letter from him? It's an, actually an email from Mike Mundy to Ray Clark. Uh, do we need, do you need to make a copy um, or anything? Or do you want to wait until? I, I, I'll just, I will need the, the official letter from Mike to. All right, point number one, the driveway out to the back two units is a bit narrow. We usually look for 14 feet wide. I think that can be done. We just change that dimension. Uh, and the, the question here is, to, we should go away from the wetland since the zoning board already approved a certain uh, mm -hmm. setback. So it'll bring the driveway a little closer to the, to the building itself. Yes? Um, did he want the driveway 14 feet wide, the ma those two maple trees also, or is that that okay? Um, he didn't say anything about that. He was looking at the dimension down by units uh, six and seven. Okay. So it would be good to get clarification about that. <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I actually have 
uh, the, uh, the driveway out to the back of the two units is a bit narrow, is what his comment okay. was. So I'm assuming that the, that's... Okay, so that then he's just... We usually look for 14 wide. Okay. Okay. Good. Do they have a tower truck here or no? No. So tower truck would be but you don't need it really because these are all, I assume the buildings are going to be two-story, not... Uh, actually, one, three and four are, I guess you would consider that two living, right. two levels of living unit and then a garage unit underneath. 35. Well, max of 35. Yeah. And the other in the back. So there, there's no reason to think that there would be outriggers on any fire engine that might come to here. So I think that's, you I know, see. one of the width constraints for having something that's solid enough for the truck to sit and have the outriggers. But I think that's only for a tower truck. So we Which just, you know, Hanover could come, but, yeah, it'd, you know, be, but it'd be up here. It wouldn't be down here necessarily. Well, that would, I mean, my question is with the two maples there, um, is there any constraint on the size of vehicles that can fit through there? I know uh, we tried to get a delivery at our house and the trees on our driveway leaned over high enough up on a tractor trailer and tried to back up, they hit the trees. So one thing to look at, I don't, I mean, you know, when you're doing construction, you've probably got some pretty big vehicles going in there, but. Um, I mean, dump trucks, we've thinned the trees already. Okay. Uh, and I don't think, I mean, you can, there's quite a tunnel there. Okay. Uh, dump trucks have been down through there without, you know, tearing out the trees. So I think it's pretty good the way it is. Uh, and of course, we're striking a balance between not wanting to oh, I do it and. Uh, you want to want to get all done and then have a fire truck go? I can't fit down there. Well, right at the 12 foot with the two trees, that would be. Yeah, and I. That would be the worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. It would be really a good idea. I mean, once this is kind of put in, he could do a, a practice run and see if there's vegetation. I mean, as it is, I mean, there's no opportunity to. Stay Staging. Have them bring their largest rig in yes, there. Yes, and, and and see how it works. I mean, you know, for mm -hmm. anyone who's going to live there, it would make. If I was living there, I'd feel better to know the fire truck can get in, and you know, not as concerned about them getting out, but at least in, so that we know that those people are safe, and that speaks a lot to the maintenance that's going to need to happen here for the. Uh, well, and they can do that there. now, right now. I mean, the road is roughed in. So oh, they, it is. Okay. Yeah. So they okay. can get in there and. Say, you know what? Is it solid enough for them to go and not sink? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, we need um, an official letter, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's to come. Uh, Mike also mentioned sort of a central uh, Knox box, which I'd never heard of at a, a key station. And what else, Jim? Well, do you want to go down the, the points there, Dave? You apparently have something up. Uh, yeah, some of the... Um, stuff. Um, it's more questions. Um, you know, like a Knox box would be just a, a, a key access to all buildings. And so what it is is you buy this box. You see a little black box on the outside, in front of this building. You tell them it's for the town of Lyme, and so when they make it, they key it for the town fire department's key. And inside would be keys to all the the units. Why? They don't so, have a key to my house. So why would they need a key to the people's homes? That's kind of what I, the way I felt. I wondered whether it was an invasion. That's um, but that's the fire well, department. Well, they say that, that people request. would be locking their houses. Let's, just, let's say somebody falls down and calls nine one one or something like that, and we're trying to get an ambulance or get somebody in there. So for senior housing, it might not be a bad idea for fire department to have access. Well, I, I mean, you know, all two hundred and twenty-five of us should be doing uh, that exact same thing. I mean, I don't want to queer people having lived in here. It's just... I mean, that, that's a, well, a typical for Let's, just, okay. let's okay. hold off on this because these are these are Mike's yep. suggestions. Yep. And, um, anything else? Um, he was asking whether there would be alarm panels that uh, they would have access to if, there, if it would be alarmed. Um, uh, then he was asking about heat pumps. Um, is there a place where you would uh, kill power to the, the entire complex? Um, will there be a single utility main located for all units or a utility shed for everything? 
So I think he's just, you know, mm -hmm. um, those would be questions that he would just like to know the answer to so that if and when he has to respond to something, he knows um, where things are. Um, so I think that, that those are, I think, questions you would just work out with him. It's not a matter of he has a preference, but he just would like to know where they are. Right. Right. Okay. Anything else? Um, point number two, he, he requested a larger turnaround down by Unit 7. Yep. Um, and is that, is that where the 40 foot thing is? Yep. Yes. He, Does he say how large? I don't think you can, you, you can do that. I think he's going to have to back out to here. That, the question is, is whether you can turn into the driveway to um, garage where you label number five. What did you come up with, Jim, in addressing that? Well, I think we can enlarge that turning space down there, probably put a fire lane or no parking uh, sign there so nobody does park in the way. His concern, I think, I, I talked to him briefly, um, was that they ought to be able to turn around down in there if they get to the wrong place they want to go back and they're talking more about the ambulance than the than the fire truck itself uh, so um we could get 50 feet down there we could make a little bubble a little turnaround again it's a little bit more intrusion into the wetland so i uh, don't know whether we'd have to go back to the zoning board or not would that look like sort of an island in the middle of a driveway going around it? Well, I don't know if an island would be smart, but it could be just a 50-foot bubble down at the end, uh, circular in shape so people wouldn't necessarily park on it. Yeah, but Jim, to get the turning radius, if you've got a 14-foot lane on both sides, that's 56 feet to start with no island in the middle. You can't do, I, I just don't see how, with this design, that turning a, turning a you know, vehicle it, like that around is, you know. I, in I, his first reaction to the first submittal uh, plan, he said, well, we don't really worry about getting out. That's, as that's, long as we can get in there, yeah. we'll figure out a way to get yeah. the vehicles out. I think that's why he's more concerned with the ambulance, because the ambulance, yeah. you have less, you do need to get that out. Yeah, and, right. Quickly, it's not. Uh, whereas a fire truck, if it sits for an hour while they right. figure something out, it's not as big a deal. But an ambulance is a lot smaller. I mean, it seems like they can turn around at forty feet. I would think. An well, you, have, you know, if you consider, okay, you do a garage there, but the the residents are parking outside of the garage. Well, that's true. Yeah. You know, you're going to lose. Yeah. I mean, I don't think a hammerhead's a better configuration for doing a turnaround. And we extend that existing that hammerhead. Yep. We just got to watch out that people don't aren't tempted to park in it. Yep. Yeah, especially like people who want to walk down the big rock. You know? Or if you have people who are just visiting, that's yes. there's not a lot of space to. Yep. You know, if the, the residents park both their cars out and they have yep. a visitor, that could take up yep. a lot of that space quickly. Yep. Well, I yep. think you know if you put up no parking fire department signs, yep. people sometimes park in front of those. You know. Yep. <laughs> Sure. Um, all right. So we have a bunch of open questions. So uh, I guess the way uh, you're giving me direction to get a letter formalizing Mike's concerns, and then we'll try to make an amended drawing that reflects those. Right. And you might, in the process, you might want to talk to him about addressing his concerns so that yeah. you're not running back and forth. Yeah. Um, Okay, Lime Highway Department. That's not, not applicable. Okay. And uh, Police Department. Uh, no comment. Uh, does that mean you. No comment was solicited. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, so, does, again, does this was an amended application, so I didn't. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember what Sean's comments were from the first go around, but. He didn't express any great concern, I don't think. Do you? I don't believe it was. Uh, uh, does the board want a police department input? Um, I would like to, yeah, I think Sean should 
see this new layout. I mean, assuming number seven isn't actually lived in and is somebody's second home or something like that, and this would be a great party area back here. And um, I want to be sure that the Sean knows that it's back there and um, and needs to be. Okay, so looked so at. Ray, we'll need we'll need that. Yep. Uh, Lime Select Board. Uh, is there any need for a select board? Okay, so not applicable. You didn't ask for that last time. No. Nope. Right. Uh, Conservation Commission, you did get. Yep. Uh, and, and what was it that the Conservation Commission uh, approved? Uh, work, uh, buildings and, and uh, parking within the Wetlands Conservation District. Okay. Basically, the, if you look at this blue line, or box here, it's going to be gray, um, that shows that the um, Wetlands Conservation District, uh, they gave a variance uh, because of size, they weren't allowed to, they, the special exception would only give 500 square feet, there was a larger uh, intrusion, so they gave a variance for the okay the intrusion. So that's what the variance, I mean, that's what their approval was. Yeah. Conservation Commission. Yeah, so it's the, the, driveways, uh, houses, and beach fields? Yeah. Okay. And um, school <coughs> district, I don't think that'll be an issue. Okay. Um, narrative summary of proposal proposed uses and associated building area for each use. Yep, I can. Okay, so we have that. Uh, days and hours of operation, number of employees, the extent of normal customer business, including truck deliveries. Well, this is a residential, I mean, we can say yes on that, right? Yeah. Need for utility yeah. services by type? Um, I wonder where the well is. Uh, it's village water. Oh, and do they, did they provide a... a <coughs> Uh, rule note to say it was fine. Yes, uh, Adam. Patrick. Uh, yeah. Yes, Partridge is. Uh, Partridge or Patrick? Patrick. 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 No, no R. No R. Well, it's okay. the R after the T, except after yeah. Patrick. 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 Sounds very New England. Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, he's, I think, actively soliciting more people on the system. I think he. Uh, they have a lot of expenses. I think they have plenty of water. They have something like this. Well, can you provide us with a letter from him um, yeah. that says that there's plenty and of water and that this water line is yeah, adequate absolutely. to serve Yeah, absolutely. And again, I thought units. we had that on the last one, so no, I can well, do that. Well, you've got more units now. Yeah, I recall it from the last discussion. That yeah. They, yeah. Said they said there was plenty. Yeah, there, I mean, yeah I we, had, we had them in a number of years ago, and they, they said they had plenty. Yeah, I think there's a whole back of well that they're not even using. Yeah. They weren't. I think they have like seven different wells. Or yeah. Different I would just ask it of anybody to make sure that that particular line is good, and then you're not doing any sprinkling here. No. And and Mike didn't want any sprinkler or cistern, any kind of. Was not concerned about that. Okay. And again, that was one of the things, uh, sort of, gravitating away from a four-family, a four-unit right. structure. Yep. So I'm unclear. Uh, is the letter from the uh, water association? Is, is Adam uh, yeah. associated with the water association? Yeah. Then, then I would think it should be from just a letter stating that the yeah. the, the association has sufficient uh, yeah. water to provide for the seven units plus the the um, enough infrastructure to supply that. You know that their lines are okay. large enough. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to be sure you can get the water and that they've got it here. I know that the water system is all chopped up and to make sure that this particular well can serve, you know, your and, and all the neighbors that, that are yeah. relying on that water. Okay, uh, lot size, building footprint, etc. Uh, oh, I skipped one. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, we, uh, well, I put the water, need for utility services by type. We, we addressed water. Was there anything else on that? Um, I don't, did not see any um, utility lines um, or, or power or line fiber or anything like that was going to come in. Uh, if that's underground or if that's... Well, I think I uh, touched on that in my narrative, but um, my hope is to put everything underground. Uh, 
but Eversource is not terribly cooperative on that. I'd like to come like a, underground from the commons using the existing poles there. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, we're likely going to have to choose one side or the other uh, next to Lori's house, right in front of her view, um, and or uh, possibly over on Northern Woodlands. They, they wanted to put it right where one of the maples was. Oh, so you just cut a little swath down the middle of it. So, um, <coughs> the, so that the, the power is shown on the on the grading and utilities plan. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's the uh, dark and then light, dark and then light on it. So, but, but, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. I missed that. Is, is there a source um, giving you a hard time about putting it under the road? Is that yeah. what the problem is? Yeah. I mean, it was, they wouldn't even much. consider it. I said I'd be happy to pay for it. Well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous because yeah. a lot of people do directional boring and it's yeah. not that far at all. I mean, they wanted shirt. to come from the country store, replacing the pole that was there with a bigger one, <laughs> hop over to the south side of the common, replace that pole, cut through the maple tree, yeah. and then put one right outside Lori's window. Yeah. So that's their plan. Yeah, yeah, tell them to come in and talk to us. <laughs> well, they do actually need select board approval, I think, to do any of that. For the new but, poles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, would, I would think it would be pretty easy to pour under the road. I mean, that's not a... I wouldn't you think that area has a lot of rock. No. Oh. No. No, it's all good Windsor soils, I think. So, but, I mean, you know, that is so possible. Um, and, but that is definitely your expense. They're not paying for that. Yes. Well, I realize there are expenses involved yeah. in this project. Uh, I just don't want to see poor design. I don't like. It. Well, that's poor design. What they're suggesting. Yes, it is. And, it's um, totally. Yeah, and it's the worst. The worst. So I'm a little confused. Um, well, no, not about. Uh, yeah. Jim, you said, and you, uh, David, you agreed that, that the lines are shown, but flip the, the page. Yeah, but but we're also hearing that. It's not finalized, so isn't that a little? Well, I think I'm I'm hoping we can improve on it. Uh, at the original uh, hearing, where you granted approval for this project, um, I think you uh, requested, demanded uh, having as-built drawings, and I think there's a lot, uh, as there is with any construction project, there's a lot that can't be. Uh, envisioned uh, at this stage but my hope is to go from wherever it comes across the road and it's already servicing the main building now that entrance is in place and I didn't like the look of that either but it's in place but in any event to get from the other side of the common to our side of the common and then to go down to a distribution area which is down uh, Jim has shown it off of uh, unit, what is that, five, the garage slash barn. Um, so that I'm seeing as being a central place where there are meters mm -hmm. uh, for servicing and reading, and also uh, potentially that's where a Knox box might live, and also uh, trash and recycling could go there. So every source is saying you have to come from line country store, not from right there where yeah. it is, yeah. because you need more amperage or what? I don't really know. Huh. Yeah, I mean they. That's that's all I guess done at the engineering level, and I'm not. I don't have privy to that. Yeah. I'll push back on because they may be just looking for you to upgrade something that they need to. Upgrade oh, well, it sounds yeah. like replacing two holes for them. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. And you're digging up the site anyway, so you can put conduit in, and, and you know while you're doing your electrical, you can uh, run conduit in the same trench for um, the communication stuff. Uh, I will tell them you said so. Yeah. <laughs> no, well that, that that's on that's going to be on you um, to, no, to do that, yeah. but um, and you I don't know if I can probably get you a typical detail for how that trench should work, mm -hmm. and if you've got electrical in the, um, and well, actually optics. lime fiber will yeah. have a detail for you, because yeah, yeah. you want to do it according to what they say. Yeah. Yeah. 
Eversource often forgets their public utility. Well, they're not the only ones. So, know, um, and it's, it's, this is like one of the things that drives me crazy because you get a really big, ugly transformers somewhere on the site. Exactly. And, and, uh, and they don't think it's great. Oh, and then you have the big, ugly bollards that protect their ugly transformers. <laughs> and it's a disservice to you know anybody who's taken care about the layout. So um, it would be, and I don't know where the transformer's gonna go if you go underground. That means it's up toward the front. So that's mm -hmm. the other thing to be thinking about is like, where is that gonna go and at the ugly bollards. Mm -hmm. And can that be on a pole or not? I, I don't know what, yeah. what you need for size. Not if, not if they're going to go underground. From the pole <coughs> up by the common, mm -hmm. they would go underground to that transformer and keep it underground and go to the rest of the buildings. But they've got to bring primary in and then drop it down somewhere. The transformer is right by the bioretention system. Right, yeah, right. Green, That's green right. square. Right. You have one at least marked on the plan there. Yep. And, and again, that was their initial plan. Uh, I'm not, still not completely satisfied. I think everyone's going to think that's a bad feature in the site, and it'd be great to be able to hide it somewhere else. Yeah. You can. I'd be concerned if you have a snow storage area right there that yeah. you're going to be, yeah, you know, that somebody's not seeing it with a snow plow. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's why the ball That's why the ball well, Right, but it's still. Yeah, and they're, they're yellow and, and tall and concrete. But um, somebody with an aggressive plow yep, yep. can at night. So yep, during a storm may not see. I don't know if, Jim, you can find a creative spot for that. I just did, I just drew essentially what Ray gave me. Right, I know, from, I know, but it, it just needs some, some thinking um, yeah. about how to hide that um, so that it's not the primary thing when you come down the driveway. Um, you know. Well, well it's a question of where the underground goes, and yeah. uh, obviously we'd like to cut it in between the two trees rather than go yes. on one side or the other yeah. because we've already got the driveway in there. Yep. Um, and like I say, I, I was just putting it, putting it where they, where Ray said they wanted it. Yeah, well, it's, it's... They've also got to be able to get a vehicle to it so that they can replace the transformer. Yes. Well, if our fire truck can get there, so can they. Um, all, right, all right, so let, let's, let's say that you have some things to work out there. So, to so follow on the subject, is there going to be a new... Is there going to be a new line going across the common? You said get from one side uh, to the common. That's what they proposed. I guess for sure, yes, Eric. What's unclear is which pole it's taking off from and whether it's going underground or overhead, and also which side of the property it's landing on on my right. property. I'm just thinking about the public space on the common. I agree. Yeah. Um, all of this could be, you know, I, I'm imagining I'm going to have 20,000 into getting the power from wherever they want me to hook up to it, to my side. I'd much rather put that money into uh, the power being underground, not cutting through any trees, and not having transformers up on new, bigger, heavier poles. So, well, we appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so need for utility services by type. What I have is you're going to get um, something from Adam, and uh, you obviously have more discussions to have with Eversource. And is a generator in this project scope? Uh, there is not. Anything else about utilities? Is there a reason why not a generator? Well, I mean, it, the dispersed nature of the units, um, you know, an original quote for the four units in the main house was 75,000, I think. Um, and that was beyond the scope of what was achievable. Um, I think what I'd like to see, and again, this is like, it's not a commitment, but 
uh, I still think there's room in this project to do solar arrays, individual solar arrays, and then individual units could have power wall packs. Um, but again, that's way beyond where I am right now. I was thinking every, every senior that I talked about this with who does not have a generator wants one. Mm -hmm. It's annoying when your neighbor's generator is going full blast and they're not even there, and you're you don't have a shower to take. Um, it I, well, one of the things um, it'd be great if you could put the conduit in for rooftop solar. I don't know the orientation of these roofs, so whether or not they actually have the um, aspect or you know which way you know would that work. Mm -hmm. There doesn't appear to be a place for a. Um, ground mounted like pretty much anywhere here. Yeah, I think I would go with roof mounted and I'd like to say I'd, it's enough of a priority that I can envision a design where solar arrays could be roof mounted. So if you could do orient your roofs and put in the conduit, the landowner's going to, or you know, the unit owner will be on them to put in their solar and their, their wall pack. If, mm -hmm. You know, that's like an add-on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that with the commitment that we're making, especially we're, we have an energy chapter that really no one's seen yet, but um, that that's something that if you can think about that in terms of the design, the orientation of the roof, you know, that way, and uh, just putting in the conduit while you're under construction, and that's making units solar ready and uh, that gives whoever moves in the option to install. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one and two, three and four, and five, I think we can get good solar. Mm -hmm. uh, and also seven, six is, I think, too close to the tree line. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe something can work. We're planning on putting a Tesla solar array up on our own house. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, they nixed a south-facing roof for various reasons and chose the house, putting them, putting the array on the east and west sides. And they said you'll get just as much or more solar out of that. So. Interesting. Well, also thinking about just the whole place as a possible community solar, mm -hmm. can you like extra load the others with the opportunity that, you know, six, because they're not oriented well, Mm -hmm. could purchase and you know I don't know if that's enough you know that's something. pretty fascinating that I, I mean as a you know again you're getting way beyond where well I don't know how to you know but to talk to Jim Nurse about like mm -hmm. is this possible right now given the legislation we have in New Hampshire and you know what it'd be good to go like this to Eversource we're like well we don't really need your power so yeah <laughs> there's a lot of talk about community power now yes where yes. individual communities have control. Yes. Part of the budget that, that just passed, that, that right. passed. Yeah, I don't know what that really means I don't for either. a situation like this, but it would be interesting just to say you looked into it and that you're not doing anything to preclude it. If, say, there's no solar installed and everybody says, yeah, they, we really want that. And, Who, you, know, you mentioned the name. Who Jim was Nurse. He lives here in town. He's the N-O-U-R-S-E. He's the energy I think David has his email. Person. And um, we've been working with him on the He's very energy chapter. Yeah, he'd yeah, be able to like tell you off the top of his head what his feasibility. Possible. Yeah. Do you have um, Do you have roof roof line designs on these at all? I and mean, I'm trying to figure out which way they're pitched. I I see number seven as having a south facing or an east west ridge. Mm -hmm. okay. So that would give okay. plenty of orientation there. Right. Uh, Six, I think, goes the other way, uh, but it's possible. I mean, these are uh, what schematic drawings that you know, it could you end know, up. Kim Quirk at Revision Energy, she will come out, and uh, you can send her a uh, PDF of this and, and invite her out to the site, and she'll tell you what's possible in, in very short order. Jim, that's who you. Uh, right. Yeah, we've also got a tree shading issue, um, yeah. mm -hmm. so we got to watch watch out for that. I know I had the same thing. Kim Kim did my house, and I had to push the house 
quite a ways away from the tree line, and to do that here, we're going to be getting into wet, wetland again. No, 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 no. I, don't, I, I think what is nice about this is the wooded effect, and you know that's why I, you know, the whole concept of like community solar is appealing, and and you know I th hope it's a recommendation in the master plan that we do that some power aggregation so that people like now you know unit six if they don't have the aspect for their roof that they could buy into a community solar project mm -hmm. somewhere and, and uh, feel like they're getting their power from the right place. Okay, so I'm going to assume we're done with the utility section for the time being. Can I just send you this email? Um, Jim, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, other information requested by the planning board in reviewing the application. We're at that stage, right? So right. that's not applicable. Not at the moment. There may be others. You may need to Re look yeah, back we may revisit that. that. Okay. Reference to a perimeter boundary survey. And all of that. Yep. Well, we don't really have a boundary survey here, do we? No, it's been surveyed around, but it, we don't. So. Is there a reference to it? I mean, one of the things I just wanted to be sure about was, like, if we didn't really even know for sure um, to be able to be sure that our setbacks are um, appropriate, if we don't have a survey. Jim, do you want to? Well, we do have locations of pins which have been picked up by the surveyor that did the, uh, the septic design, and we've located as many pins as we can, uh, and we've got, uh, we've got pretty good um, dimensions on that. Um, and as Ray mentioned, part of the condominium documents is going to be an as-built survey by a licensed surveyor. So okay, that's well, going to, at that time, that will pick up the property lines. What I, what I have a problem with is that if we don't actually know, well, do we know where this line is out in the world? And can when, we, you, when you say this line, which one? This line you're talking um, about the southern line, the, the east eastern, side? The eastern side line where we have a very tight setback because in my mind it would be a very bad thing to do the as-built and find that poor unit six was one foot over that line because we didn't know exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not the right time to find out. And if it's going to have to be done anyway, I mean, for me, what I would like to do is just see what this boundary is before. Can you eastern. hold up? At, at okay, that's that eastern boundary. Goes the whole from, eastern boundary. Not the whole eastern boundary. The one with the 198. Just, okay. Just the one that goes from the stone yeah. foundation or stone found down past the shed. Right. There's a line of trees there. There's some old granite posts <clears throat> for a fence, but it's, it's pretty pretty evident, but it's not surveyed in and we can't find that pin that's down there. Uh, I put a note on there, a flat rock flat marks rocks, the yeah. corner. That's a yeah. that, that's as close as we can get. I, I haven't seen a pin. Um, yeah. and I we haven't researched the, the adjoining surveys yet, but there is a pin down by the ninety five point eight. Uh, there's definitely a pin there. But if you swing sixty feet from that uh, you don't come up with anything on the particular on the ground itself. There is a there's a stone there, there's a flat rock, but mm -hmm. God only you know I, I yeah well I, I, that's why I don't want to have a situation where you know and if only we found this segment before construction begins on these item, you know these buildings so that we know that without a shadow of well, doubt no question that you know and then that will just go into you know the rest of the I, I don't have a problem with that Vicki I think uh, as you may know there's a real problem getting any kind of uh, moving body to do anything involved with construction these mm -hmm. days but I think it's inevitable we need a survey at least on the upper portion where the development is going uh, we need it for the septic system um, I, you know, my uh, fondest hope was that I could uh, at least see a path to move forward with three and four before ground freezes. But mm -hmm. uh, if I, you know, if I don't mind making a commitment to have a survey before six I, and seven yeah, yeah, that's, begins that's and before the road extends down yep, that way. Yep, that's that's fine with me. 
I mean, because their dimensions can change, and you have a, um, you know, if you needed to. I just want to be sure that we're not infringing on the setback, and not that anybody was yeah. here, but. Um, you know, I mean, one of the things we could have asked for is uh, latitude to build within the 20-foot setback because yes. that's pretty precious land. Yes, yep. So... Uh, well, th that's if you want to go back to the zoning board, have at it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm happy. Well. And then, and then, but, you know, if, if you can hold off, you know, on 6 and 7, I'm happy for that to be just a condition of the building permit for th those. Yeah. You know, it, that would be fine with me. I think this fall we're going to have a survey and a septic yep. design. Good. So I think that's uh, okay. Um, I mean, maybe getting into that setback, if you want to go back to ZBA, could allow you to turn six and then the roof would be facing the right way for solar panels. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd want an expert to look at that because uh, there is the issue, as Jim mentioned, the tree, tree shading. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, is having trees. the variety of facade, I think, is good so that it, it doesn't look like it's so much of a development, you know, to have variation in uh, the presentation of the massing is important. I, I agree with that, too. So, <laughs> I don't want them to look alike. Yeah. Okay. John? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the senior housing amendment here. Yeah. It says that the planning board may relax property boundary and road setbacks upon, issue, in, uh, upon issuance of a conditional use permit if it meets the criteria. Right. So we're not at that. I don't think we're at that. Okay, but, but I mean but that that's that's, that's within definitely. our purview. Yes. No, it, so. it just says that well, this plan is represented as not in over the, the setback line. So we don't know if it I is see, or we not. We don't know. Because it's not been surveyed, so right. there's no place to really measure from. Yep. So we, okay. we can't. You, say but your point is, is correct, mm -hmm. we, but we need more information. But if to, we knew, and it really was important that it be uh, an 18 foot, that the setback, or that it, that it approached two feet into the setback for other reasons, the board the, would that have. That discretion is available. Discretion to, Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, tax map and lot numbers, names, and yep. street addresses. We're good with that. Yep. Um, the location map shown as an inset on the site plan, which show, shall show the pros, blah, 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 road's vicinity. We, that just, you might want to waive that one because I think that normally is there so that everyone can figure out where this is. And okay. Um, well, do people want to waive it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We did submit a tax map with the original application, uh, but when we turned the plan around and went to a vertical format, we no longer had room for the for the uh, location map. But we can supply the location map. It's it's been prepared. It, it wouldn't be terrible to have. You know, if it's if it, if you have it, it'd be nice sure. to have. It's, um, but we'll waive that uh, officially. But it'd be great. I think I'd like to uh, like to be able to see like the back, uh, the southern borders and stuff. Okay. Um, so are, we're we're waiving the location map. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, North Point graphic scale prep, prep dates. Okay. Uh, zoning districts. This is all in the. We can waive that because it's all in the uh, on common district, right? Um, the seal of the professional, we're good with yep, that. Uh, town of Lyme Conservation Districts is the. Yep. yep. Uh, location area and dimensions of all existing proposed buildings, driveways, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a question on that. Where you have unit three and four, it shows 30 by 46, footprint of 1380, and then gross square area of each unit is 1128. I'm not quite figuring out how you do that. Well, that's gross for the area allowed per unit. Can you just explain kind of what's going on with three and four a little more? Um, I think. The dimension might be a little bit off. Um, 
I think the 46 is right, Jim. I think it should be a 32. Uh, Looks like 46 in the width, and um, judging by the 30-foot existing driveway, is about the same as the the depth from toward the road. But it just doesn't look like it's not making sense to me. Uh, I think Jim will tell you that it is all <laughs> done to scale on the drawing. Um, which part of it? Well, there are two out. units. Yeah, I'm, ta yeah, I'm, so, gonna, so I'm so taking it for one. Thirty by forty-six for two units. That mean each unit is seven. I mean, no, I'm six, sorry. No, this seven. is the footprint. I think. Right. That yes. you're referring to each unit is, I believe, something like eleven hundred and fifty. That's why I don't understand. The footprint is thirteen eighty, but each unit is it is it. Multi-story with the garage. Yes. yes, yes. So it's a garage plus two uh, stories. I'm right. sorry. Yes, the uh, the garage is the ground floor unit. Above that is one living unit, and above that is a a second living unit. So there's okay. All right. two I'll living units, and and uh, I thought this, they were side by side, but they're yeah, one sorry. on top of the other. No, uh, there are. Uh, elevation drawings that I could show you that would okay. make more sense to you, I'm sure. But uh, there are two units again stacked one on top of the other, okay. on top of the garage. Okay, all right, that's it. that so solves I, it for me. When I when I added up the gross floor area and divided by seven, I didn't count the garages. I got 1381. So um, I just, you know, if you could check it. Um, um. But then we got to take out the covered parking. The I, three I, did, I didn't count. The, well, I took out the garages. So, oh, so is that the, the difference? covered parking that is they get is, is not counted. Right. Well, three thousand square feet of it is not counted under senior okay. housing. You pass that down. And that might make sense. So these these sketches are two different visions for that building. Neither of which is correct. Um, we have a, a grand vision. Working drawings. Working drawings. <laughs> a grand vision. Okay, all right. And a, a less grand, shaker esque building. The truth is somewhere in between. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. That helps me. Okay. Anyone else for? Um, well, these are all provisional, right? Yeah. yeah. At the lowest level. Yeah. Can I, while we're like looking at this zoning calculations, for the accessory buildings, does that count garage plus the little shed? Or is that just garage space? Um, Help me out, please. Okay, Say so again. With, I'm sorry. With the zoning, when you're looking at lot coverage, yep. we walk through principal walkways, patios, decks, condensers, accessory buildings. What does that include, the accessory buildings? 96 square feet. Yeah. That's the little uh, utility shed. Recycling that's that shed. Little, that's that utility shed. Okay. That's, that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Was there some other question? Isn't that in the narrative? Didn't you say you were hoping that would be where you're, you'd be yes. able to? Yeah, you'll yeah, put 12 meters and everything. Exactly. Yeah. And then the other, just while we're on that little table, you know, 3.08 acres. Um, if it, is that from a survey? Uh, it's from the town tax maps. Okay. So. And, and again, I think it's a important, and Jim will bear this out, I hope, that most of the developable, no, the uh, land that is proposed for development is surveyed on either side, i.e. Lori's land mm -hmm. is surveyed, mm -hmm. uh, Northern Woodlands is surveyed. When we get down into the hinterlands, there's some, uh, you know, uh, it has not been surveyed. Right. But we are proposing that it would be. And there was a lot of transfer of land going back and forth. We've got surveys going down in towards uh, towards uh, the, the, the town lands because mm -hmm. was it Earl subdivided or or gave some portion of the land? 
We've got a lot of surveys down on the south side, and we got them on the east and west. But so we just made some assumptions, and that's where also I think the the tax map acreage of 3.08 is coming from. Mm -hmm. It's coming from that land transaction, which I don't believe was a subdivision. Could have been a municipal exemption. Uh, I don't know what happened with that. Was it part of the gift that created the Big Rock? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. land trust was involved yeah. with that, I think. Yeah. Okay. You know, John, can I yeah, sure. go back to the uh, the calculation? I made the same calculation that Vicki did, but it looks like there was 9,600 square feet of uh, gross floor area for the for the, the seven units, um, and that came out around 1,380 square feet as, as an average. So, so that's too high. Jimmy, right. can you explain why you're, where you get your numbers are different from, from Ray's 8386, which are on here? Well, I think the front units are, in fact, larger, too. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's fine. Sorry? Yeah, that's good. I but mean, it's we, good have, we do have a requirement, that's the point you're making, Rich, right? Right. Um, that an average no greater than 1,200 square feet. Right. But I mean, the, the number presented to us is 8386. Is what? Is 8386. Which comes out to what per unit? Less than 12. This okay. Is, Right, so there's a discrepancy between what Vicki and Rich are calculating and that and the 8386. Yeah, I just added all of the numbers less the, less the garage. Yeah, so, so just be cognizant that the, the numbers have to be, I mean, the, the numbers you're showing are under 1,200, but they obviously have to be accurate. I haven't checked, so I don't know. Well, I just, I used my calculator. I didn't do it in my head, just to, you know, whatever, so, mm -hmm. but. As, as I understand it, the two units in the house, the one unit in the barn, do not have to meet that requirement. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. the, the average, it's an average. It's not a, per, it's not a, uh, related to a single unit. The, the overall average uh, has to be 12 I see. or less. I see. But we'll build some small units for six and seven. Well, if, if the number you're presenting as eight three eight six is correct, Th that's the point. Is you need yeah. to you need to confirm yeah. these numbers and, and mm -hmm. make sure they're accurate. Yeah, fourteen square feet. Because, because if your well, if your numbers are accurate, you don't have a problem. I just added up that last column and came up with eleven three eighty six. So minus three. Minus Pardon? three thousand. Minus three thousand for the for the covered parking. That brings us to eighty three eighty six. You look yeah. I, so somebody's calculations are wrong. Right. So you're so you're asserting that the, because you're allowed three thousand square feet of covered parking, that that's subtracted from the eleven thousand. The eleven thousand. Yeah, that's the gross yeah, I see. gross floor area, and and you're allowed. But you're you're using that for parking, right? I don't have the yeah. senior ordinance in front of me, uh, but I, I happen to. But yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it we does do. not include uh, covered parking. I think is not yeah, includable. Right, 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 right. It's, yeah. It says um, we did that intentionally. It says up to three thousand square feet of park, oh. parking dedicated solely to senior housing residents shall not be counted as part of building footprint and gross floor area. Right. So is that the discrepancy that you're having? Yeah. I, 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 all I did was I added up what I thought were the unit uh, gross floor areas and... But did you include the, the 3,000 square feet? I did. If it's, a, if it's mixed in with unit one or, t or unit three and four... It is, I think. It, it is. So, so that that's where I went wrong because if it, if that's commingled with that eleven twenty eight, then I just added eleven twenty eight. No, but know. I think Eric's point was well taken that you subtract the three thousand. You want to commingle with the eleven twenty eight? Yeah, 
Yeah, but aren't you subtracting? You're allowed up to 3,000, but it doesn't mean you get a credit. So if you don't use it for your parking, it's not credited to That's your true. overage in the residence. I see. You get what I, I mean? Yeah, it has, it has to be parking. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So right. that's yeah. And you just need to change your your um, plan to show the the units and the, and then the parking separate from the units. Yes. Okay. And then well, add up the that, garages separate from the units. Yes. 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 Yeah. But that is indicated in Jim's well uh, table, right? Mm, uh, you've got we've got a difference between footprint and floor area as usual. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I um, I've just I ran these numbers up on a spreadsheet, and what you're seeing here is dropped in right from the spreadsheet. So mm -hmm. I, I know computers can't lie, but sometimes they do. Um, <laughs> well, I think I think I think the discrepancy may be that in your plan you may only have two thousand square feet of gross floor of covered parking. Yeah, and you don't get credit for three thousand if you only have two thousand. Right. Point well taken. Right. Oh, I see. Well, yeah. yeah. So you don't get to deduct three thousand if you only have yeah. two thousand. But it says feet. up to three thousand. But if there's only two thousand square feet of that's all you're right. yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. 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 You yeah. So you can right. take the two thousand out, but not the three. You can add an extra thousand feet of covered so, parking, I guess. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we need to put <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, you, you so uh, Rich and and Vicky, what were the what was the average you came up with? Thirteen eighty one. So. If you took two thousand out of your total before you divide it, that would be the accurate number, right? We don't know. We, we don't know, know how much is parking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can you, can you do that calculation here, or is that not okay. easy? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay, let's just leave this. I, thing. I don't want to do it yet. Yeah. 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 You you guys have to figure that out. It's yeah. house design, and, and yeah. so that's fundable at this point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sound like your units are that. Are really that much bigger? Yeah, well, it, yeah. I mean, even a even a quick eyeball, you you, you, you don't look that yeah. that far over. But you would you need to abide by that, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or go to the zoning board. Um, yeah, you can get that variance from our senior housing. Because I, I thought that the remedy for site plan review is. Well, this is in the zoning. Right? This is in the zoning. The 12 okay. average okay. of 1,200 okay, right, square right, right, right. feet per unit is in the zoning, and you go to the zoning Well, board. you can go back to the zoning board. And that's not, that's not waivable in senior housing. Right. I don't think so. I don't have a copy of the zoning. What's, board, so what's not waivable? The 1,200? The 1,200. No, yeah. no, that, that's very clearly, yes. it, it says... Um, the maximum building footprint shall not exceed 8,000 square feet, and the maximum gross floor area of all the buildings, accessories, structures on the lot shall not exceed 12,000 square feet. Oh, that's it. Where's the average thing? Oh, the, the gross floor area of senior housing dwelling units in a single development shall average no larger than 1,200 square feet. So, and that's a shall, so that's not... Well, but that goes to the zoning board. There's a problem, but I don't think there is. It's, it's yeah, I, I mean, I don't imagine that you're really that far off. You get a variance, you have a hardship. Well, I don't. I, well, yes. But why don't, why don't, don't you do the numbers hardship. first yeah. before? Yeah. 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 You know, going in for major. Yeah, or make six really small. Yeah. You, I mean, variances aren't handed out or aren't well, supposed to be handed out. You know, like candy. Um, so why don't you just see what we'll, you're what we'll you're back for the new numbers? Yeah, yep, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I can. Existing and proposed utilities. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Existing and proposed utilities, underground utilities, coverage wherever possible, strong locations. So that's isn't that to come? We, we don't. Yeah, we need to look at these more work. So that's to come. Fresh water supply, including necessary water supply for fire protection. That's going to be a at least a, a letter. Yep. Right, so to come. Yep. Um, sewage disposal system. 
They have places on the map for it, but um, I don't believe anything's been designed. For yeah, the have. one the one between a Building Five and Six has been designed by Harry Burgess, um, and that's where the test pits are. But the one down between Six and Seven has not been designed. Okay, so that that's still to come for for all of them. Yeah. Is that going to be the requirement on the site plan, or do we make it a condition that final design plans? Uh, well, I mean, the, the board is going to have to decide that in a, in a vote. Um, but, you know, just in terms of the checklist, um, it's not complete. I mean, does the board want to waive the need for the seventh one? Well, I think. Yeah. Well, my, my question is, do you have enough room to put in what is needed? That's, that's really what uh, it comes well, down to. I think to. that's the point, the point of this exercise. Right. For exactly. units so. one through five, again, we have a, a, a design already uh, completed for those units, because okay. they, the, they, they were the existing units, the same mm -hmm. five units. Right. So it fits in that area. Yeah. And it will fit in that area, and the mm -hmm. test fitting's been done and everything. Yeah. What about the other one? Do we, we don't know that. So we, we don't, don't know that. We don't know that. But, uh, so, so it's not, that, a, it's not a complete. But I think, I mean, we have reason to believe there is good soil there. Right. Uh, but, but for the planning board's purposes, we need to. Yes. We need that information. Yeah. I mean, I think it must. You, 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 put in a, you put in a, a rectangle there, but that rectangle doesn't have anything to do with with it's what's what's necessary and appropriate. Well, I think Jim has good background in that to determine what's, what's it's, necessary. It's basically a, assuming the same soils and the same loading characteristics, uh, that is the size of, of a bed that would would Tip. fit in there. Uh, okay. Granted, you know, uh, final design plans would have to be uh, developed and have to do test beds and everything else. So I just wonder, are they sharing a um, septic tank there? Yes. And then... Or there may be two tanks. Okay, and then I wondered, well, no, the one of them's a, like the HVAC, the little one, and the bigger one's the tank. But I wondered if you might find that, in fact, you need to flop, flip flop the uh, garage and house to be able to um, make the elevations to get it to run from the house to that tank? Um, on, on six? On seven. On seven. Yeah, if you're sharing the tank. I don't, I, I don't know, it just seems like it, is it going to make it, going under the garage and all that? It doesn't go under the garage, it goes behind the garage. Behind the garage? Yeah. You're saying because it's a long run, it won't have enough Yeah, pitch. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah that's a question. Um, you can pump it. No, but you don't want to, these poor well, people. Well, uh, for the purposes of, of, of this checklist, we're trying to determine. It's not, it's not. It's not complete. It's not complete. Okay, so we need yeah. six or seven for it to be complete. A little, it's a little this, rise. This is a little, this is a yeah. little rise. Yeah, yeah there's a little this rise. This is 542. Yeah, and that's 540. Well, probably is two or three feet of elevation. But whether or not it's a long run. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, but we don't know. Okay, so let's move this along. Electric lines and equipment. I don't know. I think that you, you need yeah. that finalized because you don't, at the moment, don't know. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's to come also. Exterior lightings and all signs, especially lighted signs, etc. Exterior um, lighting is shown and there's a detail on the detail sheet. So, yeah. we, is that a yes? Um, well, it is shown. There's a nice fixture. I like the fixture. Um, I'm a little concerned that the um, the person who lives in number six again um, is probably going to want an exterior light by their door. Um, I request that. And uh, so I would put in another one there. So yeah, number seven probably wants a door, a light over their door. I would think so too, just to get around. Well, although they can go through their driveway, but uh, and go through their garage to get to the house, but maybe that they need another, another light. Um, 
another light. So I would just put them there so that we have it. So do you want to add lights to uh, add six lights and seven? Add lights to six and seven. I'm not at the old. doorways, yes. yes at the, the front doorways. entrance. Yep. Okay. Show them. John, I, no. Well, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to ask a question. But, um, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I just, I, because obviously our house is so close, there's no lighting now on the driveway between this house and ours? No. Uh, okay. Correct. Okay. Good, thank you. There Fine. is exterior building lighting. Right. But, right, but, not, on the but not the driveway. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, no, and these, did you see the fixture? It's a sharp cut off gooseneck thing. So it should yeah, 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 yeah. But originally yeah. I thought they were on the driveway. No. Okay. All right. Phone, cable, and communication lines. So is, is that a yes or is it no, it's on the utility? We're going to follow the electric. It's probably that note on the on the legend should say that it's electric and uh, uh, phone. So is that a, is that a yes or a to come? To come. Okay. Uh, fuel storage distribution lines and equipment is that to come? No on site. No, no on site. So, so we're that's a yes then, or it, not applicable. Uh, yes. No so everything's electric. No, for no propane. No propane. No fossil fuels. Let's put it that way. Yeah. No fossil fuels. All right. Um, air conditioning, uh, including cooling towers. So, so that's We've a yes. Shown the location of the heat pumps. The condensers for the heat pumps. Okay, so that's a yes. A fire protection response plan to be approved by the uh, planning board and fire chief. That's to come. Yep. And rights of way and traveled surface of all fronting streets. Yep. Okay. And I'd like to announce, I know everybody will feel overwhelmed with joy we are on the final page landscaping plan including buffering plans along adjacent properties and public highways such plan to include consideration of surrounding land uses do we have any such buffering we've, well, we've shown the existing trees and we've also shown um, at the request of, of uh, Karen uh, a wetland landscape area we're going to be taking uh, there's some invasive plants down in there in the wetland that wetland is shared by both properties so we're going to do as much as we can to clean it up and thin out some shrubs keep the native shrubs get the invasives under control and uh so okay, so, is, so is that note is the planning board uh want this to be a yes I want to know, can uh, people put plantings around their houses? Did you say can they? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it won't be done in the initial stage. No, no, can people do that? Like, if I bought Unit 6, can I put plants around my house? The, the that would be part of the HOA. Yeah. Well, I just yeah. want to know what, what, otherwise I'm thinking that there should be some planting required um, because of, it's... It's pretty barren, at, you know, right around the houses themselves. So, are you going to let the individuals do their own landscaping? No, I think it'll be done by homeowners association agreement. Okay. So, any any alterations to that will have to have approval of the members, but none is proposed, other than let's say some existing landscaping. So, is this all going to be um, grass? Then, well, well, what is it going to be? Let's say by and large, no, there are existing gardens there which have been shortened. Uh, you know, Tracy Flickinger had 20 foot high lilacs. I'm not a fan of that. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering what, it, um, you know, what when when these units are built, what is this going to all going to be suited and loaned, or what 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 is the finished product that you are proposing? Um, or around the houses? Well, I think we could, I, I'm not going to spend raise money yet, but I think we could have a typical landscape plan for uh, at least maybe an entrance, uh, 
something to frame the entrance and maybe a, a, a place where the the owners could have a flower bed if they wanted and uh, maybe some shrubs to define certain areas but uh, again I don't want to spend raised money here yet some of it maybe you want to mark market because if you're gonna have bare utilities and stuff like that too you want to make sure that anybody who's going to dig anywhere knows they can dig there that's uh, that could be an issue yeah, I mean, that's all, uh, they have safety tape and... Yeah, but, the, the, but, you know, I, I'm telling I my, my honey do list, diggers. get out there, honey, yeah. and dig. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, he just goes out there and goes, oh, there's some aluminum foil here. i got to dig through that. How'd that get here? Yeah, and, uh, um, yeah, so... Yeah, um, but that, I'm, I'm just, you know, obviously we don't want to have trees planted where the um, underground utilities are, but um, on the other hand, you know... Tell me you're going to seed and loam it. That's fine. Um, I, I think seed and loam is probably the the base level. Okay. Right now. Yeah. Okay. So if we could just have a narrative about what the landscape is going to be like, and then uh, kind of related to that is that um, it's everybody's got a um, exterior, you know, um, HVAC, and I think that it would be a lot nicer if those were screened. Um, maybe with education. Well, the feedback I'm getting is that the people who install them don't want to see that because it cuts way, way down on the efficiency of the unit. Uh, it's challenging for them. You know, they're not supposed to be under an eave, mm -hmm. so you can't have them close to the building. You can't stack the units. Okay. Uh, they need to be like two and a half feet apart from one another. So it's hard to find a balance between the practical requirements and the aesthetic requirements. Well, could they be put on the back side of the buildings then? They will be, yeah. Well, six and seven, not so much. Um, you know, one's yeah, right They're on the sides, they're on the gable end of the building so that they don't right. get but it's snowed right, it's down. Right by their deck. I mean, it's right by my deck. I have a little bit of private outside space and I've got my HVAC humming next to me. I'm so, five. Can, well, six and seven is what I was looking at. So, if they could be put on the back side so the people who live there don't have to have them right there. Well, it depends on which way the, the east, picture. That's the east side. Yeah. Well, it could go on the opposite side on the east side, possibly. I mean, I don't know how much access you need to have to maintain them, but I'm, I'm just thinking about the use of, you know, if I lived at six or seven, I wouldn't want them right next to my deck without being screened in some way, and um, if you're not supposed to put screening, can you put them in another location? And uh, five is it? What I'm finding is that it's challenging to find a location aesthetically that works mm -hmm. with the constraints of the building. Mm -hmm. Buildings want to shed snow and water, Yep, they uh, to. and they don't like having those under, under that, and so you have to have a certain separation there. And again, the screening cuts down on the efficiency. So you are faced with competing values. That you Great. Do they allow fence? Is that? Is that yeah, I mean, I think we could this probably thing? have a two-foot separation between a fence and the units. Yeah, yeah. They, need, they need airflow. They right. do need airflow. They'd yeah. be like a you know, rail fence or something. That's anyway, yeah. Well, some of them are actually the building lattice. mounted, and they're yeah. not they're not mounted on the floor or not on the ground, so mm -hmm. that they're hung off the side of the building. And so, the problem with that is that then you have a noise transmission problem. So, you know, and then you can't have it under an eave, so you've right. eliminated fifty percent of the. Yep. You know, it's it's challenging. Is what I'm saying. It's a balancing act. Yeah. So you'd like a roof orientation that allows for solar. Yes. And you'd like trees that shade the building and a landscape plan that isn't just sod and I'm not, I'm not talking about trees. And I'm talking about posies and shrubs, you know, to break up. You know, or just tell me it's going to be loam and seed. It's just I don't know seed. what it is. Loam and seed. Yeah, I don't know what it is because okay, it's so, not noted. So, so we just don't keep going around in circles here. You're going to provide us with a landscape narrative. Yes. And that will include loam and seed. And 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 keep in mind that, that the board, for the board members, that, you know, once this is a complete 
um, application, if the board feels like, you know, there's a condition that the board wants to apply at that point, the board can consider applying the condition, um, which, you know, we don't have to do right, right now. It's just getting this through this, this checklist. Is that okay? Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Um, existing and proposed grade drainage systems, structures, topographic contours at intervals not exceeding two feet, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Existing and proposed method of handling water runoff. That's all on the no. last that's sheet that's number a yes. three. Okay. Direction, uh, of, direction of the flow, is, is that shown? Yep. Yes. Uh, uh, location, elevation, and size of all catch basins, blah, blah, blah. No catch basins. Fill surface. Bioretention system. So is that a yes? Or yeah, not applicable? Not no. Okay. Or, well, the retention basin. So, so what do we want? I would say yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, in engineering calculations used to determine drainage, etc. So the third sheet. All right, so that's a yes. Um, yeah, but do you need to alter some terrain for this? No, well, we just use the alteration of terrain as a nice little spreadsheet format yeah. where you fill in the numbers and yeah. that derives your water quality okay. volume. All right. Okay. Uh, building layout plan scale 1 to 20. Um, what's the scale, Jim? It should be 20 on your big yeah, ones. 1 to 40. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's 40 on the uh, small ones. Shape, size, dimensions. Blah, 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 structures on the property? Yep. We don't really know the elevation. Not, we see footprint, and we've got dimensions that might be right for... So is, for is that okay with you for uh, for completion? Yes, I, okay. it's okay with me. Anybody else on the issue? Okay. Showing conceptual plans and elevation of all proposed structures on the site, breakdown of floor area and proposed uses. Well, we have possible elevations, and one thing I wanted to say here is that having a possible elevation is okay for me in this situation because six and seven are not visible from the road, and so what they look like has less to do with you know impacting the um, the historic nature of the common. So I'm okay with not knowing exactly what they look like because they're hidden. So is that a yes? So I'm okay with it in this situation because they're Okay. Is anybody, everybody okay with that? Okay. Uh, federal, state, and local approvals. Um, they still need their state septic. And then do you have the state driveway approval? Yes. For seven units? Uh, well, for the new road, Good question. I assume the same access width and the curb cut would be the same. That's all the state has jurisdiction over, right? Yeah, but right. they may want to, to know, know the, the, volume. The, the volume, so you mm -hmm. may want to mm -hmm. um, just have a, a chat with them to mm -hmm. upgrade the, okay. the permit just to say that. I mean, they got angry because the fire department repaved their um, parking area and decided that they wanted a brand new driveway permit for the fire department, so, uh -huh. um, <laughs> yep, okay. They get, uh, okay, the board may require such additional information as it deems necessary in order to evaluate the proposal. So, um, that brings us to the end of the checklist, which I, I assume is not complete. Um, at this, at this point, is this a good time, uh, since it's 8, 8.35, that we have public here? Is it okay with the board if we go let the public speak? Just I think we have one, uh, Rich maybe I think is on the phone, but I don't know if he has questions or... Oh, okay. R Rich, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I can hear you. Oh, is, there anything you'd li is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, yeah, one of the things when you were talking about the landscape plan, um, I, I think it's I think it's the way it should be asked uh, about the possibility of of um, space for gardens or you know vegetable gardens. There's going to be seven senior households here, and it appears that senior people sometimes.
sometimes like to do gardening. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. And that. uh, if if he, you know, if he, he should probably just address that. Um, I know there was something also on the listserv uh, where people are looking for community garden space in town. So I just thought maybe that would be something he might want to address. And then I wasn't clear on the survey. Are we in fact getting a, a, a survey plan before uh, this gets a, um, comes forward for approval? Um, I think what, what I have on, uh, in terms of the survey, is that we were going to get, a, a, we have the survey for the east side uh, to come. Before six or seven is done. Before six or seven are allowed to begin. Yeah, so, uh, but what I wrote down here is that that's to come for the, uh, so we can, I guess what we need to consider is do we want that, uh, you know, in terms of completion of this, of the checklist, do we want it now or do we want it later? I'm okay with it later as later. long as it's okay. before six so, so, Rich, uh, did you hear all that? Yeah, I did. I mean, it seems to me if we're getting concerned about um, the maximum uh, average allowable um, uh, footprint per unit, and given that this has got seven units in it, um, I don't understand why we wouldn't require a survey right up front. Uh, if not now, when? Um, and okay. Why not? Well, how does the board feel about that? Yeah. Uh, Tim. Rich, I would just say that it seems that only six and seven are pertinent to the survey. Is that correct? But there, well, there's I mean, we're, only... we're, you can't count on a tax map as telling you what the acreage is. I mean, it, or at least I certainly um, don't feel comfortable about that. So, uh, Ray, how do you feel? Uh, well, I would, think, would you would you get a? Am, am I wrong, Jim, or do we feel like the uh, the bulk of the land on the north side of six, let's say, uh, and maybe even of seven, is covered by surveying that's been done on the abutting properties? Is that correct or not correct? Yeah. But I also so did you did you hear that, Rich? I think his concern is that the trying to calculate the total acreage of the lot without having those surveys, um, there, there's a, a margin of error there. He would prefer to see the survey done so that you know exactly how much area you have to work with and then make sure that your calculations are um, based on a survey that gives you an actual number, not something off the tax map. Well, I think I did state that we need a survey in order to proceed with septic design. Uh, I think we can do uh, three and four and five without uh, a revised even septic design. Uh, well, I guess what, what the issue is, is we're looking at seven, not, I mean, six and seven. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, we're looking at seven units, so yeah. it may be that five it's not a problem. I mean, to Rich, Rich Mengi's point, um, we're looking at seven, so the information could be relevant. I'm, I'm fine with doing the survey prior to construction of, let's say this, you know, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out a way to allow construction to continue on three, four, and five, which was, in my mind, already granted approval, and we've done the design work for the septic. I'm completely committing to a survey and the septic design for six and seven. But I sort of said it's a timing issue. Yeah. So, all right, apropos of that, I guess, then, you, you know, is it is it a phased development? Are you looking for approval of uh, five, the front five units? I mean, that, that's the thing to ask, you know, do you want to get yes. approval for the first five units if there and were come a way, back for if this? If there were a way to do that, yes. That's, I was sort of led to believe we should just go and do the whole thing all at once. Go well, that, I, I think there that's, is I think that's good advice yeah. if, if you have a complete 
you know, application. Yes. But given that you don't, but you you have a timing issue, mm -hmm. uh, it might be a good idea to. And I'm I'm just saying this off the top of my head, which is a bad idea. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, maybe you want to uh, do the uh, the application for the five. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and, and, and then come back for the when you have everything for six yeah. and seven. Well, I don't, let's see, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to figure out if I followed that approach, would that mean starting over with the Conservation Commission, starting over with the well, ZBA? Why? why I, would, I don't know. Is David, it another, I, a renewed application for, um, or or am I just modifying or amending this application? It depends on your timing. The, the CBA ruling will run out if you don't use it. What's in? The, uh, like, is it a year? Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, well, I, I, I would support Ray going ahead with seven right now. I think it's right on now, two years. With limits on on uh, on six and seven, not and. Even if it, it if it turned out to be 2.98, six and seven just shrink. They get to be smaller because what we're talking about is footprint and gross right. floor area, so that they have right. to be smaller units. And um, you know, I don't. So he needs to make sure that they are zoning compliant before he gets his building permit. So you don't you don't feel that we need a full survey at this point? All I was concerned about is that he um, build it to you know the setback, but I feel now that he should have a full survey before he starts six and seven, so he knows what size those so should be. We're approving be. seven units, conditioned on getting the the survey, survey. done prior to. Design and construction of six and seven, final design and construction of six yes. and seven, and that we would need to have those designs resubmitted for final approval. Yes. Right. Yep. And I'm, I'm also very happy, at, assuming they're in approximately the same location, um, to authorize David to approve them as long as they're zoning compliant. That means that we have an average of 1,200 square feet for each of the units, and uh, we're not exceeding, you know, any of the zoning issues based on um, what the total area is here. Um, I kind of believe that. I mean, a bigger question for me is reconfiguring the driveway to allow the ambulance to turn around, and whether or not that would trigger. A, back to the other boards. Right, I'd have to look at their decision as far as if yeah. they, they specified um, if it's just the that they're allowing a intrusion into that area for that purpose or if they specified the I don't believe they specified the actual area. Oh, okay. So, well. Okay, so I'd, I'd like to be clear about what we're saying here or what my sense of what we're saying here is is that when it comes to the to this checklist, um, we're saying that we're okay with it uh, in terms of the perimeter. Uh, I'm back to the perimeter thing. Is that the right place? Yeah. Um, we're saying we want to survey before six and seven, but. We're okay with one through five. That's my personal. So, opinion. Is, what does everybody else feel? Yeah, I agree. Because as as Mickey said, Ray can just adjust the size of six and seven as far as the. I, I don't believe that the text map is going to be that grossly right. off. Right. No, you got a polygon where you got one line from here that's uncertain, but that that line is pretty important because. If it's off a foot or two in either direction, sure. you're going to have to either move your buildings or right. you're going to have some other calculations that are going to make a difference mm -hmm. in building size. So that is critically important, but it's it's not grossly um, um, critical, inaccurate. Critical, but not grossly. It's not grossly yeah. inaccurate because right. you're already we constrained by yeah. all these other points. Yeah. Right. right. Um, okay. Yeah, and then the setback. Okay. So I, I'm okay with that. My only question, I guess, for Ray would be is if, if suppose we do run into some constraints with um, the gross floor area, 
maybe you want to take that extra floor area out of one, two, three, four, or five in some way instead of out of six or seven. So you're you'd be handcuffing yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the in regards moving forward, where you, where you design them in phases well, so instead of all of them. Five is existing, so it'd be hard to take square footage out right. of that. We could put on a subtraction, but it's easier to do an addition. Um, so uh, let's see, and three and four is pretty much dictated by needing four garage spaces. Okay. So that's the, you know, uh, three is 24 existing. by 48, roughly. No, five is existing, one is existing. Um, oh, five, yeah, so yeah, no, I read, I read the, yeah, 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 no, I read yeah, five. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just curious, um, with, with six and seven, what led you to, I mean, you have, you have uh, two units, in the front two, and then one in the garage. Um, was is there any advantage to having these separate, or, or a reason not to have two units in one building to and consolidate them? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, honestly, no. I think that's just sort of the way the design evolved. I, I mean, it might give you more I room. Think, uh, well, I think some people. Um, let's see would prefer to have a single unit. There isn't somebody right. over you. Give you options, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, that's what it was as much okay. as anything. Yeah, I think visually it might, it might work nicer to have two separate smaller units rather than one big building yeah. stuff back there. I mean, I'm torn myself. I Personally, I sort of think building six is kind of in the wetland. Uh, we'd have more open space if we eliminated that's number six. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and then maybe you could do a larger two unit for number seven. Um, and that's mostly out of the wetland district too. So I, you know, I think if there was a way to split the application uh, to allow us to refine the plans for six and seven, I think that would end up with a better a better design, frankly. So David, what on a practical level, how would Ray do that? Um, I think you would just need to resubmit the plans um, to, us. to the, the board um, at a continued hearing. And you know, at the, you know, this round you decided to remove those. Yeah. And, okay. uh, or, you know, again, I don't know how, you know, at what point you want to come back and... Well, it'd be before the ZBA expires. Right, which is two years, yeah. and that's state law. Years, okay. So that's not, unfortunately, yeah. it's not something that yeah. the, the planning board can... But yeah, just, I would imagine two years, you you would want to get approval before two years in. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. But he could like he to could do it, ahead. finish this in this life. Yeah, so to get, to, get, <laughs> to get the five unit thing on the way, I mean, I I would really like yeah. He that. could do the and one through five. You know, this is gonna. You guys are gonna not be happy with me. But what I would like to see, because I love this plan because you can't see the new houses. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like I think what happened at my house, which we had two houses in the back where Gary Thrasher lives and the Stadheims. They're kind of off the street and you don't really see them. And that's good. But if you are going to work on this some more, what I would love to see is you um, actually flopping this to here and getting this backyard so that you could put a single road with double loading here and put some other, other homes back here in, uh, on Northern Woodlands. They're going to annex you the property because they're going to be full. They're so supportive. And I want to I want, I have more units because I think that this is a great idea to be able to get these back here. And for all your you know utility stuff, you're only all this run of road, you're only getting two units, and you should have more. I'm feeling these dagger eyes. Yeah, so, I understand. So, uh, okay. At this, I, I understand, at, but at, if you're going to redesign, I would think big because, and you know, it may not be in your lifetime, but you find somebody you want to continue your vision because, I mean, guys, we just changed our zoning ordinance to allow more people in our village, mm -hmm. and um, the amount of work and investment that he's putting into just the planning. The infrastructure. And we're yeah. only getting two units. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And there needs to be more. Well, I mean, and, so and to, to that end, you, know, you, you could probably I, I, I have gotten more units that, doing the plan development uh, and having smaller units, you know, plus an office uh, in there. So it's not like, uh, it's not like this is... Well, 
you know, I welcome your ideas, and frankly, I, I would love to have a design charrette with the planning board and say, what, what would you give me some constructive ideas? I like what, your yeah, ideas. What I don't want is for every, and okay. the reason why I came to that was so that everyone wouldn't go by lorries, but that it was a circular driveway like that. So she only so, got incoming traffic and no, not Just on not, a practical level, we're getting close to 9 o'clock. I understand. So what I'd like to do is check with Rich Health Insurance. His questions were answered. <laughs> Let me finish. Okay, before. <laughs> He's good. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you're good. Okay. So, um, I, what, what I think I'm understanding is you're going to change this to the five unit approval. And I think yeah. to your, your most recent point, let's schedule an informal um, also, uh, you know, once that's done, to to have that discussion, mm -hmm. um, and now our very patient public, who had to sit through all of this, God bless you. Um, uh, it's your chance to have your say. So, if anybody has anything to say? Well, let's go first. I'll go first. Um, first of all, I'd love you to take a look at your map and see that the line that goes, the yellow line that I've marked is my property line. Um, um, it's kind of confusing because you've got the conservation thing that goes in the middle of it and it looks like mm -hmm. it's just one tiny sliver. All right, I, I can't see Here, that. Just send so that down, please, if you would. Thank you, Rick. So is that the line that's right about the box? In the flat rock, the yeah. flat rock marked corner? Yeah. So the yellow line is what I've got. And then also... Oh, I see. That's all your land. That's all my land. And I go, I go behind Northern Woodlands and behind... Um, you wrap around the back here? I do. Okay. That's that's the loop Vicky was talking about. Right. <laughs> 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 it's a parking lot or what, what's it? But, um, no, it's, it's Johnny it's, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, Johnny Mitchell, thank you. So that's, yeah. and then also a tiny little piece, the shed, according to the town map, sits right on the property line. So that, that shed has been measured from the pit. Okay, I'm just, I'm reporting what's on we the went, property we, now. We had these concerns okay. at the zoning board, and I, I know what you're talking about. So I went out and measured from this pin, which is actually, it, it, that's pretty precise. It's sticking right out of the ground. So I taped up, and I taped off on the side of the shed. Okay. So it's in the right place. Awesome. Um, I'm going to be real fast, because we do have limited time, and I don't know if Lori wants to stay anywhere. Okay. Um, it's just, it just feels real close to be in the middle of the woods and to have a house that close. That's my feeling, and I know Vicky's, I know what Vicky's concern is because um, I've shared this with Ray. We don't need to solve all of Lyme's senior housing problems on one site. Um, and as it stands, there's a house on East Thetford Road that's on the market for 864. I have no idea what two single uh, free yeah, well, houses I mean, are going to cost me. I mean, r really, we live in a brave new world I know. of prices, and, and that's beyond. I know, know it's crazy. Beyond our so, um, that but also I, wasn't sold in the weekend that it was put on the market, so that might say something. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I also, um, I'm not speaking on behalf of Lori, and we haven't talked about this, but the amount of traffic that goes within about 30 feet of her back patio, and the number of people that will be coming back and forth as a hiking trail are there and you know there's a wall of the buildings and it's just you have every reason to expect privacy in your backyard and I'm not sure that the plan as it stands right now offers that um, and then you've got the HVAC little rah going and that is part of the peaceful enjoyment of her home um, I'm this is the first time I've ever been to this kind of a meeting and I, I did the zoom thing on the uh, ZBA and was overloaded, but one of the things I thought I heard was um, given, given the coverage of all of the different parts that add up to 20,000, 20, now will be more because of the wider driveways and other kinds of things. That's way in excess of what's allowed for that space. And that was one of the things that I believe uh, the ZBA said, well, that's not in our purview, but we want to make sure that the planning board um, attends to that and we've added it with a turnaround, and we've added it with wider roads. Um, so that's a concern. Um, uh, yeah, it's just, just, in my opinion, there's just not a cohesive plan in the downtown area for, you know, what are we doing here? 
Um, and I, I, I would love the survey to be done sooner rather than later, and I think cutting the plan in half and getting done what is already underway is great, and let this process of six and seven um, kind of get some questions answered. Perfect. So yeah, to that, and first of all, I appreciate your comments, and I think the board you know, needs to think about them. Um, I, I hope that the, you know, the cutting it in two um, will allow for more thought about all of this, um, and uh, how do you feel about the front five? Units? I think it's great. Okay. Yeah, I think it's really great. Okay. I mean, I, I like the, you know, the simple version and the, the high-end version. They, from the two seconds I saw them going around the table, I think it's really wonderful to have people right. um, in our community who want to stay here. I mean, there's a lot of brain power and heart and soul of people my age and older who right. qualify for this kind so, of So, So at least temporarily, we're okay on, on these issues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when we revisit six and seven, we'll, we'll need to think about those things. Yeah, and how, and how far back into the woods do you really want to go with buildings? Right. I um, think the, yeah, the, the planning board does want to do it. Like you said, a site visit to be yes. able to look at this. Right. Yeah. And you can, and you can, and you can, you can and should yeah. well. Yeah, I've asked David to be here. Paul Luck is invited to say yeah. yeah. No, please. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you yeah. guys know that territory a lot better. I mean, we don't know. We don't know anything about it. You guys, your your backyard. Yes, yeah, so your your know. turn. I would like to say something. Um, thank you, Karen, um, and thank you, Ray. I, I I have so much to say, but I will make it really short. Um, let's see. I, I just thinking about our our property. You all know we live in number twelve. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that Eric and I enjoy about our property is we have a public side, the front, we love being on the common, and you know what, the backyard is a private area, and it's, it's very private right now, and this will definitely impinge, um, and I understand about the trees and all of that, but it will impinge, and I do believe it'll, it'll reduce our property value. Um, that is a huge topic, I'm not going to go there, but wait. But one thing that I would like you to consider, and I didn't hear it tonight at all, and maybe I've missed, is, um, so we have a home on the west side. We live there. We use our backyard. We have grandchildren that come and visit. We, we like the privacy. On the east side is a business. They're not there at night. We are. Our bedroom is right there. Um, our living room is right there. Um, Northern Woodlands, right now, is a business. They are not there at night. They are not enjoying their grandchildren in the backyard. So just in consideration of things like, you're talking about a, you know, an electric line, widening the driveway, God forbid, um, the hiking trail, Karen said it, I, I agree. Just to think, is there a way to have that be on the Northern Woodland side, on the east side, instead of so near our property? Um, maybe I'm too late. Um, no, this is, no, your this is, this is a, you're exactly on time. <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there. Got let, you let, me the ask you the same, let me ask you the same question. In terms of the, you know, now splitting in part, yeah. does, how do you feel about if it, the front five? Well, okay, so my second question, my second thing was, is three and four been approved? No. Nothing's been approved. Oh, okay. No. okay. Um, they, they were when they were attached well, to yeah, one but that, of the right, right. Actually, and I saw that plan. But that was um, yeah. in a conversion. That was a conversion. Yeah, right. So this is a completely new... And it was attached no, and we could I'm see that. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I'd want to see, see it. I think that knowing my friend Ray, um, it's not going to be some horrible looking thing. Um, we, we, no matter know where, what, we know it, where he it's, lives. It's exactly. It's gonna. It changes our our private backyard. No matter what. On the other hand, totally in favor of senior housing. So as I said, I so I'm, I'm trying to condense this into one short thing. But um, I, I guess the main thing is for all of you to think about this east and west in a mm -hmm. private home, as opposed to a business. Um, if nothing else, for the walking trails. If okay. nothing else, I mean, the driveway, right now, I'll just say the driveway is open and inviting, and people are walking down it already. I mean, people are taking their dogs back there. 
hello, you know, it's private property. So if it's then all, you know, nicely done, they're going to be thinking, oh, this is how you get to the walking trail, right next to our house. So that's so, all I want to say. So, right, obviously, you're, you're hearing this and... And I'm getting ready. You, you, it's okay, it's your house. No, this, this is, this is so what you're supposed to be yeah. doing. So, uh, uh, you know, it's in the... In, in the stage two or whatever you, you might want to. Well, I, I support everything that the direction that this is going in. Uh, I have already spoken to Elise about buying that back land. Yes. Uh, she, <laughs> she is not, uh, she's considering it. But we, we have spoken about uh, merging garden space and having common uh, you know, footpaths, um, and I think she she endorses everything that this uh, that my project is about. I think it would be wonderful to have less driveway on our land next to your house, and to use an existing driveway. That's a legal challenge, I think. Um, but I mean, it does create some opportunities too. I really think yeah, I like your idea. You had. Oh yeah, well, uh, kind of say it, you know, if we're talking about that, then the, your big leach field's in the wrong spot. So I wonder if it could be shifted. Um, thank goodness it's not approved already. But if you if you were going to run this around to here to connect up with this driveway and then have a, a another little alley or something to serve houses in the backyard is your leach field in the wrong, Jim's reaction in the wrong spot. Well, well, wait a second. Are you talking about a loop road? Yeah. If if he if he buys the additional land? Yes. Okay, well let's yeah. let's not Well get I don't want him to go get the that because that septic system is right in the way of of the kind of Logical way to the soils are pretty similar all the way across yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, they're well drained. They're Windsor. Yeah. Most well, of its map is yeah. Windsor. Uh, so I don't think that a leach field is a controlling factor in the design. No, but I'm worried about it being in the way of traffic. Well, but I think Jimmy's saying say, there's enough. I'm uncomfortable yeah. with this conversation. Okay. Because I don't think the planning board should be designing yeah, or expressing right. our opinions and, and about how to use other people's land but, but at the, um, and particularly and, at this point and because we might have a we might have a a general concept for how we'd like to see the town develop but we also have immediate neighbors and we're 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 expressing our opinion about how to impact those immediate neighbors and i think frankly i think that should be that that's all well i, I think, think it's fine for us right, well, to express uh, to, to, to get feedback but what I don't want to do is, if there's a possible land purchase, we don't have a role in the possibility. You know, we should. I also be, don't. We need well, to. We I need think, to address I the neighbors' concerns. Vicky, I know, but I also don't want to urge the developer to do something. Have the planning board urge them to do something that's going to impact other people's additional properties right now. We're making a judgment on what was being proposed here. Yeah, We're I, not designing something. I, I agree. Them. Let's stay focused on what we have before us. Um, so what I'd really like to do is uh, bring, bring up. Oh, okay. Just a short yeah. one. When you said, am I in favor of one through five, I'm in favor of the buildings, but um, the impact on Lori if there's another way to solve that, um, right? Of that, course. And, and I mean, those Lori, are part of one through five. Lori made, made that point, and I think everybody heard that. So and I, I, I failed to make that nuance in, in okay, my sure. support. Um, and I, I, right, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be sitting in your seat tonight. No, this yeah. is incredible this, what you've done. Yes, yeah, right. right. yeah. so, so it's a lot yeah, of things. Really, that. really, what? Get out, get out of the kitchen if you can't stand oh. the heat. Uh, yeah. Really, what? Um, I'd like to see is is that you know everybody as happy as possible. Um, so let's say, and Ray, you tell me whether, and David, Ray and David, um, this application is is incomplete. Correct. Um, you're going to come back to us for approval on the front five. Correct. And the, then the revised drawings and addressing as many Yeah, and I'm going to give David the, the checklist, and he can go over with you the thing 
issues that are applicable to the front five. And then um, at your pleasure, might not be the right word, um, before the two-year thing is up, you'll come back and have a discussion with us about uh, an informal mm -hmm. uh, meeting, as you said, just to have some feedback. Yeah, and let me just add that I respect Vicki's opinions, which I think she states less as a member of the planning board and more as somebody who's in, been involved her entire life with urban planning. And I think from an urban planning perspective, we're, we're using up a lot of land for the return of senior housing. Well, so, I think the best place to have that discussion is at the informal. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I think uh, you all, uh, with great patience, have given me a lot of uh, valuable insight. And uh, so we'll, we'll keep moving forward, we hope. Okay, so we'll, we'll expect you back for the approval to five. Um, continue to time and date. Okay, so. Can I just, um, there are a couple of things. Um, I want to, can I, just details here. If there's overflow parking right next to the leach field, there need to be bollards so people don't park on the leach field. Because that, that happens all the time. And is your driveway, I don't know what the material of the driveway is. Uh, crushed rock. Crushed rock, okay. Yeah. Do you mean and everywhere, do you mean existing or the proposed? The new driveway, proposed. Yeah, it'd be uh, crushed rock and stay mat. Okay, and the um, pathway, the material would be? Uh, uh, I, we've designated that as unit pavers, either Pathway? concrete. This whole Wait, thing? which? No, no probably. Trail. Trail. Probably. Trail. Oh no, yeah, no, probably that's just, just a grass path. Yeah. Yeah. So no, yeah. no, no hardening of yeah. that. And uh, one, one just to see anything. Um. Okay, so we're, you'll come back for six and seven. The rest of my um, questions are really related to those. Okay. So no more. The only thing is those dollars uh, to protect the leach field. All right. So um, that that draws this episode to an <laughs> untimely end. No, it's no, a timely end. Um, do we have a, it's it's nine oh eight. We have a second case. How how um, do people feel? Well, is this one coming okay. back? Is this is coming back. Date? Yeah, you need to set the time and date. Yeah. Uh, set it. Uh, two weeks. Um, so that, that's the hearing. Yeah. Okay. So we'll that's the hearing. I'm not going to be here that. Uh, yeah. So we're we're having the uh, energy chapter hearing. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
but all told, this is exactly what our right. voting but says we want to have. What, what yeah. I would like Thank to do is, is, is move on to the next consideration. Thank you all. Thank you. Which Thank is, you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, are people willing to hear the next yes. case? Okay, then let's go to the next case. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Good evening, David. I need to turn the volume up on that, John. Um, you, you, you're, you look like you're good at this. That's wrong, I guess. Okay, it's turned all the way up. David, say something. Is that good? Yeah, better. Okay. Yes. I did not give um, the, the board any of the copies of the other approval. I, I didn't know if they were going to want it or not, seeing this is a, a new application, different areas. Uh, 
okay, Vicki has a question. So David is, uh, um, this is Vicki Smith, um, are, is NRCS going to uh, accept an easement based on this plan or is there going to be a, a, a full survey of the easement area? You want to ask a question? I'll, I'll multitask. Um, can we approve a lot um, that has no frontage? That's not a conservation lot. As long as it has access way. Ahead. No, no, no. We can approve a conservation lot, but a conservation lot uh, is permanently protected through the grant of a conservation easement. So this lot 5.1 need to have an easement on it in order for us um, to approve it without frontage. I thought, and let me find um, again. I think on page nine is the definition. Yeah, it's um. It's on page six. No, look at page nine, lot non-buildable. Okay. A lot created for other than building purposes. And so I think it would fall under the the lot non-buildable. Does it say that we can create a non-conforming lot? Um, if it's a lot for other than, I mean, it's still a lot. Um, well, what does it say about forming a lot? I, mean, I was just trying to say, how can we approve this without frontage unless there's an easement on the 5.1? And so, what did we can we do? get an easement on the 5.1? What did we do with the Chesley? I don't, Chesley? It, I don't know what we did for any of these. I'm just trying to be following our rules. Yes. Yeah, so, and um, you know, and I, so can so we? So, what an is the language about developing a lot? It's nothing. It says a, con it says a conservation. Law. No, no, not uh, forget the conservation okay. lot. We have this this definition of non-buildable lot. Yep. What? Where's the language relevant to us not, you know, not being allowed to um, approve a non-buildable lot? No, no, it doesn't say non-buildable. It's non-conforming. So no, it says non, non. So you're saying, but that's what I I want to know the language. That we're looking at that would well, keep us be conforming because it is it conforms to the language or the, the definition of a non-buildable lot. You guys, uh, this says a lot created for so, other than so building purposes. A lot, if you look wait, at what are you, where are you reading? I'm from? reading from page lot non-buildable, page nine. Right. It says a lot. It doesn't say non-conforming lot. It just says a lot. Right. But it doesn't say that we can create a non-conforming lot. It says a lot. Okay, so where, where I just want to be able to follow the legal stuff. So, right. so where, what are you referring to? Where's the language that we can't do, uh, create a lot? Okay, look for, above at lot. So that, a lot okay. shall be a sufficient size and lot to meet coverage. the zoning yeah. reuse provide such setbacks. So. Um, the thing I want to uh, understand is, is it, it's, it's non-conforming in what ways? There's no road frontage. So could a lot without road frontage that has, is there any way for that to be conforming if it had a right of way or something? No, or it, have, well, it just needs an easement on it. No, no, but let, I'm saying without an easement. Is it? Is it is there a way to, to can that be developed as a non-buildable lot? No, created. Created as a non-buildable lot. I mean, it, so the the single 
non-conforming element is the driveway. Is that so it's the frontage. The frontage. The frontage. The driveway can be negotiated. Okay, so it's the frontage. It doesn't yes. have frontage. I guess I'm curious how David interprets non-buildable lot. It seems to me that the, it's defined in the zoning as a thing. You know, it's a non-buildable lot. Right. But it's still a lot. It still yeah, is a lot. So, so it's, it, I mean, the, to your point, it, then it takes us back to the definition of lot. And a lot is yeah. conforming or not conforming. Well, right. we're, but a lot is occupied or to be occupied by a principal building. Well, that we don't have to worry about because there is no building. Because it, we, have, building. we have the ability to have a lot that's not buildable. It, is right. the proposal to create a lot for other than building purposes? Is that what he's, that sounds to me like what he's proposing. Is right. like yes. to carve this out for other than building purposes. Yes. Right. Yes. So then we can then approve a non-buildable lot. Right. We can't approve a non-conforming lot. But but if it's non I mean Vicky's and, and Eric's point is that it's not conforming. We can approve we can approve a non-buildable lot, but it has to meet the requirement of a of a lot. Right? That's, that's what that's that was I was getting hung up on. That's I mean, I, I understand that there's not going to be any development, but I still don't want to be, you know, because we think something might be conserved, playing favorites or whatever. Right, right. It doesn't, and so We're if we could, the yeah, law. so I want to follow the law. So I wonder, could we make a but, conservation lot as a lot 5.1, get an easement on it, so that we? But I don't. I don't think roles. David, you're not. You're not interested in a in an easement on five on. On the smaller lot, are you? No. No. No, I don't think it is. So, non-buildable lot. So, you're saying that a non-buildable lot must be a lot. Um, well, a lot is defined as a parcel of land occupied or to be occupied by right. a principal building, and accessory buildings are used as customarily incidental to it, which is not what we're doing here. So, a lot and a non-buildable lot. Are two separate things. Yeah, that's what, I was, that's what I was trying to say. That a non-buildable lot is is some is a different beast than a lot. So you're you're saying it's it this definition non-buildable lot is making a distinction from lot. Right. Yes. This is you have a lot and then you have a non. -buildable. A non-buildable lot and a, and a lot by definition created not for building. other than building purposes is a non-buildable lot. So it doesn't lot. need to be conforming if it's not buildable. Right. Yeah. So so I guess when we go to the definition of a lot, the reason it has to be conforming is because it's because that's going to be built up. Yeah. There's a the, uh, the non-conforming lot on page ten. I'm trying to decide if that's relevant here. Well, let's take a look at it. Uh, non conforming line. Well, which was uh, legally created or in existence prior. by itself prior to the to the provisions of this ordinance or the adoption of the provisions of the ordinance. Yes. So I think that it, it would be pre zoning. And well, what it's telling you is a non conforming lot may be built upon if it's predated under certain conditions, which is again different from a non-buildable lot. If we're just carving out a lot, I mean you can do the same thing for forestry. You could be splitting off a lot in forestry and just say this is 160 acres but it's non-buildable. Um, so that's not really a so what, what you're saying is this this is in there for a reason. Non-buildable lot uh, to distinguish from the requirements of a buildable lot, I guess. Why would you have a non-buildable lot for other than building purposes that must also be conforming with road frontage and all these other things? Because those those conformances are to requirements associated with building. Right. Exactly. exactly. That's why I say if it's non-buildable and by definition Sir, you're saying it's non-buildable. Do you make a good point? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with um, what, what, uh, what does the rest of the board think? I'm not an attorney, but I play one on TV. Well, <laughs> is this uh, already existing lot, David? No. no. Is this a so lot? We, we approved it already. We approved it, but there was no follow through. There was no signing of the plat. There was no. It was not uh, uh, sent to Grafton for recording. 
So is there a landfill? And it was all smaller. It says limits of landfill. Well, what is years that? ago, the town had, the dump, had their dump. That was the old town dump. And, the old town and dump. so you're trying to carve that out so that you can then give, give land that perhaps may be given as conservation land without the dump. That's what we're That's doing. That's exactly right. Okay. The, uh, right. the Upper Valley Land Trust has not accepted a conservation easement if it included the dump. And so the dump has been carved out. And the reason the earlier approval was not followed through is because the earlier approval was was uh, based on a five on a uh, was it, a, a two acre lot or something like that. Three, I think. And an adjacent um, adjacent conservation lot. Uh, so I'm I'm confusing myself and everybody else. Yeah. I, I, anyway, so that that, point, that that's the side the point. Non buildable lot, and so it doesn't have to be the requirements of the lot that that would be a building lot. It doesn't have to have frontage. Doesn't have to have any of the attributes of a buildable lot. Is it a non-buildable lot? I approve that as a non-buildable lot. That's the end of the discussion as far as that lot is concerned. I agree with you. What if they come back to us and want to make it a buildable lot? You'll say no. Well, maybe we won't. No, 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 no. No, we can't. If we approve, no. If we approve this as a non-buildable lot, that's the end of it. I'm so sorry. People come back. Well, they can come back. For that condition to be removed. But it's yeah. not a condition. It is a condition. It's a definition. It's, it's a, a definition. It's no. It's a condition. Okay. We're approving Vicky, it as a non-buildable lot. Vicky, if if we if we. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna just say I don't see attorney. how this is, but um you know. Let, let me you gotta talk to the attorney. address what you just said. Yep. If if the planning board says anything as a condition. Mm -hmm. They come back. Somebody can come back, but it doesn't. So what? I think that David has a good point that maybe best bet is for me to tomorrow contact town council and ask them if that's you know, based on our definitions. Okay. If that's allowed. I mean, that's... That's probably... The we're not the only to town in the state that's ever wanted to do this. Yeah, and we, we have differing opinions on the board, so it would be right. good to get... And none of us are lawyers. You know you're right. Oh, you are. <laughs> no, well, I'm also, I don't know, understand why we couldn't accept some sort of easement here that would be permanent. And then I'm yeah, going Wouldn't you say here on the little lot? Because he doesn't want it. I know he doesn't want to, but that allows us to approve this subdivision. Well, David, and, and do you want to do that? If, if uh, you want to require an easement running to the town of Warwick that says it's not buildable, that would be fine. But the selectmen have to accept that. But my understanding is that the east, that the town and the selectmen are reluctant to accept any more east. I think that's true. Yeah. So, and, then, and I think you don't need to do that if we if we carve it out and just say this is non-buildable. Well, so, but as far what, what we're what you were also saying, which I think is at this point is a good idea, because we we have some well thought out. Um, different opinions is get get town council to tell us. Right. Yeah. I think there's ambiguity, so I'd be curious to hear what town council says about whether whether a non-buildable lot has to be conforming. Yep. Okay. Because it's because. And then you know if if town council says uh, you can't do it, then then uh, you can look into whether the town will. You know, it's really that's crazy. Uh, take the, the, the illustration of the, of the back timber lot. Large timber property and the owner wants to subdivide the back lot as a non-buildable lot. What's the harm? For, for timber harvest. Yeah, I mean, I think that, David, I think it's a very good example. And um, my, I lean towards that interpretation. But we've got a board that's seems to be split. So I think uh, it would behoove us to, to get input and take it from there. Yeah, the lawyers need work, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you actually are a lawyer. Yeah, and I'm, I'm telling you that it's perfectly all right to approve it. <laughs> well, as an objective uh, uh, opinion, uh, there we go. Uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, our, our best bet, given, given the reactions on the board, is to get input and, and take it from there. I'm sorry we, we can't go forward with it tonight. Anyway, last time you did this, you called us hooligans, and, and, and as I recall, and, and I guess we're still hooligans, so. <laughs> no, I praised you last time because you came up with the right decision. Okay. <laughs> Well, how, how did well? Let me. How did we approve it last time? It was actually approved as a conservation law. No, it was built. It was well. That was originally wrong. a con, going to be a conservation law, but that was wrong because it wasn't. It was never going to be a conservation law. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was a conservation law. And, and, I, and I, I, I gotta say, I mean, I wouldn't be unhappy with this being a buildable lot. I mean, if, if they could find their well, and, and I was actually going to suggest if it possibly could be a buildable lot, to have um, the possibility of putting a well on the conservation land somewhere so that someone could live there. I mean, oh, no, I know, no, that's I know. way, way off. So way okay, off. okay. <laughs> it's a long night. Um, it's 9.30. We're going to get uh, town council's input, and can we continue this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Time and date. Twenty second would be the. Um, we can't do anything else the night we have the hearing. Is that? We could probably do this. I think we might be able to do this. Yeah. Okay. We can. Um, so July eighth. It, it, it'll July. just have to be scheduled for after whenever that is over. Yeah. No. But the, and we need to have whatever the lawyer says in advance. Yeah. I'm. I'm like. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to not be here that yes. week. So yeah. I will no. tomorrow. Yep. Um, I won't guarantee, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be leaving um, yep. the second, or gone the second. Yep. If I can't get the lawyers... Could you could you ask Dina then to send it to me, if you're not here? Yeah, I'll, I'll let them um, know that I'm not going to be here, and if they are not able to give us an opinion. So, I had another question for David Roby. Does the state have an approved driveway um, access for this lot? I don't know the answer to that. I assume so. Well, can you check on that just to see if there is one? Because we really should have had at least one approvable access. I mean, there has to be, um, right. because it's an existing lot. And, 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 and clearly there's access. I mean, I, I would think so. I just, I want to. It's a four year time, thank you, but I've driven to all of that access road many times to go to the old dump. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, the road is actually so, still there. So is it... Is it so, come on, you're making, you're making this overly complicated. Again, the small lot is non-buildable, cannot be built on. The large lot will not be built on without further planning board review and approval, including review and approval of the access, if you, if you like. So let's get this done. This is not, this is not hard. This is not, uh, this is not a complicated... Yeah, uh, d d d look... Let's keep it simple. We have we have a disagreement on the board, and we, I, it, it strikes me that we we might not approve this. So I'd like to get um, the input of, of the lawyer, and um, my my feeling, which is uh, not being a lawyer, is that the the definition. I, I agree with with uh, David Van Wee's initial interpretation um, if I had to uh, take a stand on this, but I'd rather be uh, certain. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so July 8th. July 8th. Should I should take a vote to just... Okay, so the vote is uh, to... Continue. To, uh, I need to make a motion and all that business. Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion to continue this a hearing to the next meeting, the date of whatever it is. July 8th. Um, is there a second? Uh, Vicki? Before you vote on that, uh, I, did I hear you say that you're having trouble hearing on something else? That might be Yes. Uh, please consider this before that hearing begins. I've waited on this line since 7 o'clock because that's when I was scheduled. Um, Start, start the meeting five minutes ahead of time so that you can approve it. Or disapprove it. 
Why don't we meet at uh, six thirty, or start the other one at seven thirty or something like that? We can start that. Here. Can you know? Uh, I, I, yeah, I've started. I put out notices already on the website. Uh, okay. Seven o'clock. Uh, yeah, I don't want to change the time on that. If we, if can people are willing to come in at six thirty, okay. we, we can do that. Are sure. people willing to come at six thirty? Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody not willing to come at 6.30? David, are you willing to be at the meeting at 6.30? Certainly, yes. Okay. I get hard to wait. Uh, I bet. You sound happy. Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> We're used to it. Um, yeah, I know you are. <laughs> um, all right. Um, let's... Uh, are, are, uh, any, 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 let's let's get out of here. It's not Did you take a vote? Uh, David has a oh, oh, that was was interrupted. All right, all those in favor? Yes. yes. Everybody, yes. even the alternates, are in favor of it. Um, okay. We so can do new business. David has a lot of new no, we what we need to do is go home, and next time we'll. Uh, you don't have anything pressing. No, I have nothing pressing. Okay. Are we doing this or like this that? You missed that. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. okay, so so next time we're having this 6.30 hearing, we're having the energy hearing, and then af after the energy section is over, uh, as I recall, we're going to invite people who came to stay and just have informal discussions about the solar systems. Yep. You okay. gave us some guidance for how we want right. to locate solar systems uh, and general input and then um, and then the following week we have Ray. The 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks. So thank thank everybody I, I want to thank everybody for sticking around and uh, doing everything that we did tonight. All right. Great. How are we advertising the uh, I don't know. The It'll be on it's uh, out on the, the bulletin board, it's mm -hmm. down at the post office, it's on the website. Okay. Uh, listserv. listserv, I will be doing a listserv email, and I'm actually going to be doing an email that week on listserv while I'm away. I'm going to schedule it ahead of time. Oh, cool. So, good. I found out today that that does work. <coughs> I just wanted to make sure that it, I do a test to make sure it works with my computer off. Yes. Right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.